Let us begin our celebration of love and thanksgiving in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. To prepare our hearts to remember and give thanks, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you break the power of evil and make all things new in your Son, Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. May all in heaven and earth acclaim your glory and ever cease to praise you. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Son of Man to whom the Ancient One grants dominion, glory, and kingship, is a prophetic figure of the risen Christ. He is the one who will come at the end of time, to proclaim His eternal kingship over the whole universe. A Proclamation from the Book of the Prophet Daniel As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man, coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the One like a Son of Man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away, his kingship shall not be destroyed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. The Lord is King, in splendor robed, robed is the Lord, and girt about with strength. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. And He has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed, holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is King, He is robed in majesty. This short passage from the prologue of the book of Revelation, contains a description of what Jesus has done and still does for us, Namely, out of love for us, He has freed us from our sins, and has made us a royal nation of priests. This is what entitles Him to be our King. A Proclamation from the Book of Revelation Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To Him, who loves us and has freed us from our sins by His blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for His God and Father, to Him be glory and power, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, 
He is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord God, the one who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us open our minds, open our lips, and our hearts to the reading and the living of the Holy Gospel as written by Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But, as it is, my kingdom is not here. So, Pilate said to him, Then you are king. Jesus answered, You say I am king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world. To testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. My dear friends, what we heard is the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pleasant greetings to all of you. We have come to the closing of this liturgical year with the solemnity of Christ the King. We hear Jesus, the King, prophesied by Daniel and spoken of by the book of Revelations, declaring before Pilate the very purpose of his birth and coming into this world, that is to testify to the truth. A very simple yet very powerful mission statement from the very own lips of Jesus that also gives meaning to our earthly existence as well as we all share in this grand mission if we belong to the truth. Jesus tells Pilate, For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Jesus tells us what it means to belong to the truth, that is, to listen to his voice. But what does belonging to the truth really mean for us? It means being God's instruments of the following. Number one, trust. This is about faith. Jesus invites us to be instruments of trust. Trust is one component of faith. The book of Proverbs tells us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. One who trusts the Lord from the heart should first detest false testimonies and misconduct. Second, he should live in the truth and not hide in hypocrisy. Third, he should prove himself as worthy of trust in small things and in big things. Jesus is our security, promising peace to those who put their trust in him. In other words, God promises peace to those who embrace a truthful life. Number two, Belonging to the truth means being an instrument of reconciliation. 
This is about relationships and healing. Jesus invites us to be instruments of forgiveness and healing. In his second letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul tells us, Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. He says that this gift of being created anew is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ, and who has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Let us then bring to others the forgiving love of God. Let us be forgiving. Let us also encourage others to be forgiving. Let us remember that only love renews all things. Number three, belonging to the truth means being an instrument of universality. This is about vision. You know the word Catholic is derived from the Greek adjective katholikos, meaning universal. It was used as early as the time of Ignatius of Antioch at around 35 to 107 AD, a contemporary of the Apostle John, and was later used in 325 AD as a binding term within the Nicene Creed, which has been recognized by all Christian churches throughout the world and throughout history. Thus, a Christian Catholic is guided by godly principles that apply to all at all times. Universality is also about seeing and living the big picture. It is thinking globally and acting locally. And as we already know, the first condition needed to see the big picture is the light of God. It will not be possible to see the whole picture of God's universal role in our lives if we continue to live in the darkness of sin. Let us then expose all these dark areas of our lives to the divine light of God's mercy through remembrance, repentance, and reconciliation. For unless we see the big picture, we will be unable to see where there is a missing piece and the roles that God and our attitude play in the big game of life. Do you see the Catholic picture, my friend? Do you see the whole universal picture of your place in God's plan? Are you really still Catholic in your faith, hope, and love? Number four, belonging to the truth means being an instrument of the touch of God. This is about love. Jesus invites us to be his very own hands and heart. We can only be the instruments of the master's touch if we have allowed ourselves to be touched by his love. Jesus, after his tassel on his cloak was touched by a sick woman, asked, Who touched me? Jesus still asks us the same question. Who among you has ever touched me with so much faith and love? We also become instruments of his touch when we think of the people who have moved us to deeper faith and more genuine love. Love them back and pray for them. Is there anyone we know whom God has touched positively in an emotional, intellectual, and spiritual way recently through you? Let us pray for them. Number five, belonging to the truth means being an instrument of heaven. This is about hope. Jesus reminds us in the Gospel of John, In my Father's house there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus invites us to be instruments of hope to this world, now going through its widowing time. You know, there are many ways of sharing to others this insight of heaven. We have the so-called corporal works of mercy. 
What are these seven corporal works of mercy? Number one, feeding the hungry. Number two, giving drink to the thirsty. Three, clothing the naked. Four, sheltering the homeless. Five, visiting the sick. And six, visiting those in prison. And seven, burying the dead. And there are also spiritual works of mercy. Number one, conversion of the sinner. Number two, instruction to the ignorant. Number three, counseling the doubtful. Number four, comforting the sorrowful. Number five, bearing wrongs patiently. Number six, forgiving injuries. And number seven, praying for the living and the dead. These are based on the teachings of Christ and on church practice since apostolic times. There are indeed many roads to being a sacrament of hope to others. In summary, how do we testify or live the truth? By being instruments of trust, of reconciliation, of universality, of the touch of God, and instruments of heaven. Of course, the first proof that we are servants of God is to testify to the truth that God exists, that He is alive, that He indeed lives, and that He indeed rules our lives. Happy Feast of Christ the King to all of you. May God bless you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift up to God all our prayers. After every petition we shall say, Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ our Shepherd, gather your sheep from every land into one flock, and pasture them in green and fertile meadows. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ our Savior, heal the sick, seek out the lost, guard the strong, call back those who have wandered far away, and strengthen those who waver. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Judge of all human beings, when you hand over the kingdom to your Father, place us at your right hand, so that we may inherit the kingdom, prepared for us from the beginning of the world. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Prince of Peace, break the weapons of war, and teach all peoples to live in harmony, mutual respect, and cooperation. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ, heir of all nations, gather humanity into your Church, so that all hearts may love and serve you as their Sovereign Lord. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Christ, firstfruits of those fallen asleep in death, bring all who have died to the glory of the resurrection. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Christ our King, graciously hear us. 
Lord Jesus, King of the universe, reign in our country, our communities, and our families. May everything we say, think, or do contribute to the realization of your plan of love. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away, O Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my dear friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, our loving Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your Son reconciles mankind. May it bring unity and peace to the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice, to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with all the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Roberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Coming together as God's children, with confidence we call on our Heavenly Father in the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The love and peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of love and peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus grant us healing and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Panis vivus et vitalis, hodie My Jesus, I believe that thou art present in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire thee in my soul, since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you give us Christ, the King of all creation, as food for everlasting life. Help us to live by his gospel and bring us to the joy of his kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. 
Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer our prayers. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the abundant spiritual blessings you bestowed upon us. We are grateful as well for the material blessings no matter how abundant or scarce they are, for our stewardship. We pray in your mighty name, to break any evil seals and consecrations, curses and spells, unholy ties, links, evil relationships and bondages that had been cast to, made over, or forged through the material and monetary blessings we receive, own, and keep. Help us remember that these are given for your glory and for the greater service of the Church and of humanity. And we ask you to bless all our relationships. These are yours, O Lord, and we submit all these under your most glorious authority. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, loving and serving the Lord in one another. Thanks be to God. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon.